we're going to look at elementary matrices, and we'll start with the definition on what that is. So an elementary matrix is a square matrix. That corresponds to a row operation when multiplied on the left. You could instead multiply on the right, but uh, we like to put our coefficients on the left, so we're going to multiply on the left with these elementary matrices. And I think this is best shown in an example. So let's go ahead and do one example now. What is this matrix called? Identity. Identity. To get any row, uh, or to get any elementary matrix to represent the row operation you're thinking of, all you do is perform a row operation on this matrix. So let's go ahead and do minus three row one. Now, super easy to do. This row operation is not the tricky part here. So there's our row operation right there. Now what I'm gonna do is left multiply this by a matrix So I'm just going to put a matrix in here that would benefit from that particular row operation. So the natural row operation, you'd probably knock out the two in the first column, but we're only allowed to do one row operation at a time, so I'm just gonna knock out the three. But instead of performing a row operation, what we're going to do is multiply on the left by this special matrix we just created. How do you multiply matrices? Cross, down. So draw your arrows. Might be good to have a highlighter here. We have multiple rows, multiple columns. So I'm gonna intentionally subdivide this up. And now you are going to carefully multiply this out. There's a lot of zeros, so it shouldn't be a horrible multiplication. So go ahead, multiply it out. Multiplication questions. Now, as you were doing that multiplication, you should have <coughs> noticed on your third row that basically when you're going across row three, 
you're going to multiply the first entry by negative three and the last entry by one, which is the same as that row operation, performing that row operation. All the other uh, rows when you go across only have a single non-zero entry. And so you're just gonna pick in the first one going across, you basically get the first element, which is, um, let's see, you basically copy those over. So this has the exact effect of performing the row operation. What is the opposite row operation to the one we just did? How would I undo subtracting three row one to row three? How would I turn this matrix back into the one on the left? You only need two or three brain cells. Add three. Boom, add three row one to row three. That's it. How do you undo subtracting three of those? You want to subtract them, so you add them. All right, so let's do the opposite row operation now. What do we call the opposite in math? Inverse. So we're going to look at the inverse row operation. So I'll write down the identity matrix and then perform that row operation. So we did a minus three row one before, now we're gonna do a plus three row one. Uh, elementary matrices, usually we use the letter E for those. So I'm gonna call our original matrix E. <clears throat> so if these actually undo each other, I'll call this one E, let's call the first one E1 and the second one E2. First and second. All right, so we saw this matrix 1, 0, 1, oops, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 2, and 3, 5, 7. What we did first was multiply it on the left by E1. What we're gonna do now is multiply the result by E2. So this, just reading this off, take the matrix. Remember, multiplication is associative, so you can put an extra parentheses in here because you have to do, uh, you can't switch the order. That's super important. You cannot switch the order. So if you parenthesize it this way, you will subtract three row one from row three, and then when you do the E2 operation, you'll add three row one to row three. So they'll undo each other in this form. Matrix multiplication is associative, which means I can regroup in this order. And if these two row operations undo each other, what should the product of E2 and E1 be? Identity. identity. So that better turn into the identity. In this case, it'll be I3 because we have a three by three matrix. So let's check, does E2, E1 equal the identity? So E2 was 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 3, 0, 1. E1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, negative 3, 0, 1. All right, there's two ways to multiply. You can multiply the way you're thinking, which is go across, go down. However, there's another way to think about this. The matrix on the left is going to perform a row operation on the matrix on the right. What row operation is going to perform? Add three row one to row three. And you should be able to tell that will turn into the identity. Or you can multiply them. So you have two options now. It's only true on the elementary matrices. 
If it's not elementary, it's very hard to see. If there's like f four or five row operations, that's a little hard to see in your head what's going to be happening four or five row operations ahead, at least for me. But one row operation, that's not too hard to see. All right, so the answer is yes. Each row operation is invertible, meaning each row operation you can undo. So each row operation is undoable. So really, we're going to call this invertible. So that means if you perform five row operations, you could <coughs> list the five matrices in the correct order that would have the exact same effect as performing your row operations. So you can, instead of thinking about row operations, you can think about elementary matrices. I'm going to have to reorder my notes. I don't talk about determinants for a long time, and I want to talk about them well before eigenvectors and eigenvalues. All right, so let's keep going with invertible matrices, and then I will let's see which the book goes. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to bring in determinants soon. Section systems. All right, let's move into the next section then. So this will be the fundamental theorem of invertible matrices. So the following are going to be equivalent. So A is going to be an n by n matrix. So we're writing that as A is an element of n by n real space. The following are equivalent. So on the uh, following are equivalent theorems, that means if one of them is true, they're all true, and if one's false, they're all false. You can't have two of them true and three of them false. They're either all true or all false. That's what it means to be equivalent. So first, A is invertible. We don't know what that means yet. So AX equals B has a unique solution. for every B in R. Actually, every B in R N. B would need to be N dimensions. AX equals zero has one solution. What solution will this always have? What do we call that solution? to a homogeneous system. <coughs> trivial solution. So it says only the trivial solution. Remember, you're guaranteed to have a trivial solution for a homogeneous system because you just put in zero for your variables and that will zero everything out. What do these last two bullet points mean about free variables in your linear system? How many free variables will we have? When you get exactly one solution. Zero free variables. What does that mean about consistent and inconsistent? So we have a solution. So that means consistent. 
What's that? Would it be indeterminate? Isn't that, do we do indeterminates? Okay. That means unable to be determined. Okay. Uh, that can happen with limits and some other things, but usually not, not in our context here. Uh, so those two, uh, it means you get a single solution, no free variables. All right, so those are linear system. Those last two are relating them to linear systems. The reduced row echelon form of A. So I think that's reduced row echelon form. Is that how the book writes it? R R E F is I N. That means you can reduce A to the identity matrix using row operations. <coughs> A is the product of elementary matrices so you could write A as E1, E2, I'd probably write the other order so I'd write it as like EM, EM minus 1, E2, E1 like that because I usually want to think of the right the first row operation I want needs to be on the right so I'd put E1 on the right, then E2, then E3, then E4, go in that direction. If you want to find these elementary matrices, all you have to do is row reduce, do one uh, row operation at a time, and then you know the order of row operations to uh, multiply together to get your matrix A. And last point, the columns of A are linearly independent. So this theorem pretty much summarized most of what we've done so far. I'm only quickly going to discuss the proof. And the way we're going to prove it is we're going to prove basically going downwards that if you get one, you get the next one, you get the next one, you get the next one. And then we'll show that the last one is the same as the first one. And I'm only going to talk through the proof here. So if A is invertible, actually we'll write a little bit on the right side here. If A is invertible, that means A inverse exists. And what can we do for the equation AX equals B if you know A inverse exists? How do I solve for X? Multiply by A inverse on which side, left or right? The left. So I would go A inverse AX equals B. So I have X equals A inverse B, like that. Hey, look, we solve for X. That is bullet point number two. So we took the fact that it was invertible and showed, yes, there is one solution for X right there. It's that product. So that's the first arrow. That's taken care of. Now the next arrow, AX equals B, has a unique solution for every B. Let B equal the zero vector. So the second one has a solution now. So that one was super easy. Now we're going from AX equals zero, has only the trivial solution, then row reduced echelon form is IN. This one's a little bit more tricky. AX equals zero. So if AX equals zero has only the trivial solution, what we're gonna do if we use matrix A and then fill the last row up with or last column with zeros, that would be the linear system in an augmented matrix right there. What uh, if we perform row operations? We already know there's exactly one solution, and it's the trivial solution. So what does that mean about our row operations? What will our final form look like? No matter what row operations, we'll still have the zeros in the right column. So it'll be one down the diagonal. So it'll look like identity right here. 
that's what it will look like. One, 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 meaning all those variables are zero. So if AX equals zero has only the trivial solution, that means no free variables, you will be able to reduce it down to the identity with row operations. So that takes care of the third arrow. Now we're going to go from the reduced row echelon form is the identity down to A is a product of elementary matrices. So we're assuming that we can reduce it to the identity with row operations. All you do is take those row operations and multiply them on the left in the correct order. And then you can see your matrix A is the product of all those elementary row operations. All you do is put the identity over here and that identity is what you reduced uh, your matrix to. And then those are the operations you perform to do so. So that's the, that arrow. Now we're going to the last downwards arrow. A is a product of elementary matrices. The columns are linearly independent. So remember the columns are linearly independent. We saw that that was the same as up here, AX equals B, having only the, uh, oops, not that one, it was really that one, AX equals zero, is only the trivial solution. And then you can just follow back down the logic. All right, last up, we'll go bottom to the top, columns are linearly independent, A is invertible. Uh, let's not worry about that right now. Not worry too much about that. All right, so for now, invertible just means the inverse exists and is equivalent to all these other statements. There's a statement about the determinant, which we will get into soon, but uh, we're not going to use that just yet. So let's do a example. So A is going to be 2, 3, 1, 3. Actually, let's go 2, 3, 1, 4 as a product of elementary matrices. So what we're trying to do is write A as Maybe, I don't think, we we'll probably won't need more than four. We'll hopefully we can do this in three uh, row operations. So I want to figure out what are these elementary matrices right here that, to turn it into the identity. So what we're going to do is do row operations to turn this into an identity matrix. Be careful, do one row operation at a time. Don't try to do two at a time because the order is super important. So do one row operation at a time. Make sure that you label them because that's going to be super important. My first row operation is minus two row one. That'll start you out. So turn this into the identity with row operations. Any row operation questions? That should be the easy part. Now what we're going to do is turn those row operations into the elementary matrices. <clears throat> we have to be careful. Let's look at this equation here. What I'm going to do is start here and then work backwards. Actually, let me change the subscript order. I'm going to go one. 
four like that. All right, so we're going to have the identity matrix. And I'll use the yellow highlighter here. This is going to be E1, then E2, then E3, then E4. So I'm modifying the identity matrix. And if you look, the identity matrix starts in the lower right and goes kind of backwards. So we're going the reverse order that we perform these. So I'm going to erase all that ugly highlighter stuff. All right, how in the world do I get that first row operation? Multiply, so I'll, I'll compute my row operations over here. How do I perform this first row operation? So, well, we're gonna multiply by a half, but remember, you take your identity and you do that operation on it. So we're gonna multiply the first row by one half. So that is E1. So again, I took my row operation I would perform on the identity first to go backwards. Oh, I have to invert these too. Yes, we do have to invert these. Oh, we're going backwards. So the order is backwards and the uh, I have to do the inverse. So what's the opposite operation of multiplying by half? Multiply by two, which I think somebody said who was way smarter than me. All right, there we go. So that's E1. We'll check this one. We're done. Hopefully it will work. I think your first um, operation wrong. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, no. I didn't want to say anything. I didn't want to bother. <laughs> what's wrong? You multiplied it by negative two by row one. No, I didn't. Did I? All of you are wrong. My life's work is ruined. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> My life's work is ruined. All right, let's reset everything. Was that too obvious? You thought surely he wasn't making that mistake. Never. Never assume a mistake is too trivial to make. Oh, all right. So I think that's the right row operation first. <laughs> I'm going to compute these just going to the right so I can do them backwards underneath them in one line instead of trying to like have the snake line going multiple across multiple lines. So I'm just gonna go across in a row. So we got zero. Minus five. One four. Now it's multiply by negative one fifth, row one. So zero, one, one, four. Now minus four row one gives us zero one one zero. What's my last row operation? Swap. So we got one zero zero one. All right. So these are our row operations to go from A and then see dot 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 we're going to get down to i but the important thing is we went to the right each time so now we want to do is go from i back so we're going to reverse the order and invert the row op So first of all, do we agree on the row operations? All right. 
So we're going to go backwards. What? How do I get the row operation for a swap? All you do is take the identity, swap them. So I'm going to write out in English, um, this is the swap row one, row two. You could compute it. I'll do it one time for a swap, but I just want to swap row one, row two. We get zero, one, one, zero. So it's swap the two rows. All right, so that's our swap row operation. Now I want the opposite of subtracting four row one. What's the opposite of subtracting four row one? Add four row one. We're going to add 4 row 1 to row 2. Our first one was a swap. Why am I writing this all over the place? Add 4 row 1 to row 2. Let's write that where it should go. Questions on that result right there. Should be 1041. Now I want to multiply row 1. What is the opposite of multiply row 1 by negative 1 fifth? What would be the opposite row operation to undo this? It's the opposite of multiplying by negative 1 fifth. Multiply by negative 5. Tempting to say a positive 5, but you got to get the sign back to what it started as. So it'll be negative 5. And if that's tricky to see, negative 1 fifth times, uh, times what is 1? Negative 5. So you have to unmultiply. All right, so that is molt uh, negative five row one. So let's go ahead and do that row operation on the right here. Remember, you're always modifying the identity matrix. Last row operation, I want you to invert the row operation. You're subtracting two row two, so think about what's the opposite of subtracting two row two to row one. How do I unsubtract two row two to row one? And write out the elementary matrix that corresponds. All right, so we got our four matrices correspond to four row operations. I picked two by two system, or two by two matrix, so I didn't have to do that much work. This works three by three, four by four, 20 by 20, 1,000 by 1,000, doesn't matter. But I think for a quiz or midterm, two by two, three by three is as far as I would go for this. All right, how do we know if this is correct or not? In order, it's E4, E3, 
E2, E1. How do I know if this is correct? So multiply them all. And the identity will be 2 by 2, so it'll be an I2. All right, you can check these. You just multiply them out. Multiplying this big product is going to take a while, unless we do row operations, treating these as row operations. So you can do that as well. So let's do that. Treating these as row operations, it's really quick if I associate. I'm going to draw some obnoxious parentheses and then I'm going to delete them. This is how I'm going to associate right here. I'm going to multiply one matrix to the left each time. This will let me compute this really quickly. So we're going to do this product first. So zooming way in, what row operation does the matrix on the left represent? Swap in rows. So this product, swap the rows on the matrix on the right. You have that. There's another way to think about this. What is the matrix on the right called? Identity. What's identity times any matrix? The, the other matrix. Any matrix. <laughs> so identity times any matrix is always going to be, I shouldn't use letter A, but there we go. Identity times any matrix is going to be identity, or is going to be that matrix. So, all right, we're going to move to the left now. Now perform the next product, but we're really looking at a row operation. What row operation is this matrix on the left? How is this different from the identity matrix? Plus 4R1 to R2. So you got to get that 4 down there. So I can just do that row operation instead. So we get 0, 1, 1, 4. All right, finish this off. There's two more products. You can either multiply or do the row operation. So on one of them, multiply. On the other one, do the row operation. I don't care what order you do, but on one of them, do the row operation. On the other one, multiply. You should get the exact same result. So somebody reading your paper won't know what you did.
So I said that you, you wouldn't be able to tell what row operation, or if somebody did row operation or multiplication, but I took a baby step and wrote out the, if I skipped that baby step, you wouldn't know which way I went. But I did a multiplication here. All right, so now you can break any matrix into, well, any invertible matrix into row operations times the identity. Now we have a theorem about inverses. Well, it's really about what uh, can lead to an inverse. If A is a square matrix, and there exists a uh, square matrix B, such that A, B equals I, or B, A equals I, then A and B are inverses. So this comes right from the theorem that says inverses are unique. So if there is a matrix that has this inverse property, meaning you multiply it and get the identity, then there can only be one matrix that has that property. And it's called the identity. Our next topic is Gauss-Jordan method for matrix inversion. So it's incredibly quick to write down. Remember, only square matrices have inverses. So A has to be a square matrix for this to work. So what I mean by A vertical bar I is A is going to be on the left part of the matrix, and then you're going to put identity on the right. So it's augmented not with one column, but as many columns as you need for the identity. So it's a little bit weird. This matrix is going to have some extra stuff on the right side. So it's going to be a, a double wide matrix, you can call it. And what we're going to do is row operations. And you keep going until you get the identity on the left. So it's the same row operation as you're used to. You're trying to get row reduced echelon form on the left. And what's on the right side is the inverse of A. So it's the same row operations you perform, same goal in mind, get one in each column going down the diagonal. Now, if you cannot get the identity, meaning if there's free variables, you're not invertible just like we saw with that theorem. If there's free variables, not invertible. So if you cannot get the identity, i.e. there are free variables, and only one free variable messes it up. But if you have one or more free variables, uh, then A is not invertible. So this is definitely important. So our first example, let's invert the matrix A is 1, 2, negative 1, 2, 2, 4, 1, 3, negative 3. All right, step one, you're going to put it into a bigger matrix with the identity on the right side. So in this case, we have 3 by 3, so we're going to augment with the identity matrix in three dimensions.
So we have a one two negative one two two four one three negative three augmented with one zero 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 one zero 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 one. When you do row operations, yes, there is six columns. So whatever you do on the first three <coughs> entries, you do it the entire row. So don't just mess around with the first three or four columns. Every column you have to pay attention to. All right, what is the first smart row operation? You can do more than one at a time. How do we get the two out? Minus two row one. And then the one at the bottom will be a minus row one. So on row two, we got zero, minus two, six, minus two, one, zero. And then last row, we got zero, one, negative two, negative one, zero, one. So any row operation questions? Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to leave you here, but if you don't like cliffhangers, you can finish this problem off. Probably three to four row operations from the end. And how would you test if you have the inverse? <coughs> Multiply A inverse by A, you better get to the identity. So we'll be doing that tomorrow. Midterm is on Friday. No, Thursday. Midterm's on Thursday. There is no Friday. No,